So, Master Nerd Q&A, episode two, episode two. So, I got a question on the Instagram. Interesting question. And it's about Python. It's about development. And it's about when to rewrite an app. So, I'm going to read some of his DM to me. And we'll take it from there. There is something about dev in Python which just clicks for me. That's never happened before. I've used a lot of JavaScript but never felt so confident that I could create something from scratch with it. But with Python, is it is different. Now, my question is pretty simple. If I feel that Python is something which I should use and, and I enjoy working with, should I just continue or make myself to learn PHP and continue working in the existing framework? When I sit down and think a bit about web dev, I don't know why I just, I can't just do the work in JavaScript only, as it is the only language with, which lives in the browser. I hear you talking about PHP all the time, and I agree on some points. However, it is in a downtrend, we like it or not. But that's not really important now. For the thing I want to do right now, it's just a thought. My main job is not dependent on any technology mentioned here, but it is me who wants to develop new skills and start a side job in the future. In the first part of his email, he said to me, well, his DM, he said, I'm interested in hearing your opinion here. I am working as a software developer for the last five years. I started as a front-end dev, worked with Meteor JS framework, so I got to do back-end as well. And after one and a half years, I moved to something completely different, Microsoft Dynamics 365, Business Central, basically no front-end at all there, but I fell in love with the logic behind it. Let's say I find backend dev for me a better role now. A year ago, I started using Python for some automation scripts, and I couldn't believe how quickly I had a working product. It is pretty cool too, as it generates cryptocurrency for me without mining. Now I got an offer from my company to recreate a portal for our customers, which is in WordPress PHP at the moment. I am taking care of it in the last two years, but I don't enjoy it at all. I took a project from some previous guy who created everything and continue working on it, but now I am thinking of rewriting it completely in Python. So a couple of questions. Now, some people say PHP is in decline. On some lists, it shows in decline. In other lists, it's in the top three languages. Here's the thing about PHP. It's not going to go away for the next 10, 15 years, if ever. Look at C++, look at C. It isn't going away. And um, when it comes to the web stack, when you're doing server-side web programming, nothing is as easy to onboard people on with uh, PHP. Now, is PHP the most beautiful looking code? No, but it's extremely productive, extremely mature, especially when you look at frameworks like Laravel. That being said, you can do amazing web dev work with Python. You can do amazing web dev work, of course, with JavaScript and Node.js. You can do amazing web dev work with C Sharp, .NET, or Java Spring. It depends on what you want to do. Now, as people know, for startups, I suggest PHP, or maybe Node.js, maybe down the line, maybe you can go Python, Django. The big rise in Python is mainly in machine learning and data sciences. To get into data sciences, data sciences, you have to be a data scientist. So don't, if you don't have that background, don't think you're gonna learn Python and become a do data science programming, you won't. But you could get into AI programming, although if you're gonna go work for larger organizations, they're gonna probably want some sort of computer science degree before they hire you, even if you are a really good coder. Um, although if you are a really good coder and you got a track record and history, you can go in there with that portfolio, maybe some certs, and you might be able to land those jobs as well. On the other hand, when it comes to the web stack, with the web stack, as I've been saying for the longest time, degrees are far, 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 far less important. It's much more about ability. So one of the key questions in this DM was whether or not he should rewrite this WordPress slash PHP app from scratch in Python. That is a big question because 
there's a few factors in it. But at the end of the day, it comes down to your assessment in terms of how much time is it going to take to rewrite it in Python versus just patching it and keeping it up to date with uh, PHP WordPress. So it's very project specific. You're gonna look, have to look, look at the project. If it's a basic WordPress site with no extra functionality, no plugins implemented, you might be able to do it all in uh, Python, create your own uh, content management system in Python. Um, I hardly suggest that you don't. One of the big rules, the top three rules in programming is reuse, reuse, reuse. Don't rewrite something that's already there unless there is a significant reason to do so. So for example, with Studio Web, we uh, wrote the app from scratch because there was nothing, there was nothing out there that came close to what we needed. It's a very unique uh, web app. It's very, very different from anything else. And to even build it off of another platform wasn't something I was going to do. There was something at the time called Moodle, which we implemented at first, tried to take Moodle, and I wanted to extend Moodle and then uh, add the extra functionality. But uh, when we looked at the architecture, and I, I just said it was too much of a mess. I was too different, rather. Moodle was too different from what we needed, what I needed for Studio Web to do. So I decided to build it from scratch. The last thing I want to do when I approach a web uh, a development job, wh whatever type of development, is to rebuild from scratch. The major players in the world will not do that. The major games in out there, they'll use a gaming engine, but they'll license from somebody. They're not going to write a new gaming engine uh, to build their game. They're going to use some established engine most of the time. Very rare that people write everything from scratch. Anyway, if you're using a high-level language like Python or PHP or Ruby or uh, Java, any of these, C-sharp, you're not, though those languages are based on other languages, right? Uh, Ruby is uh, C, a C language. It's based on C or C++, forget which one, you know, PHP as well. So get it out of your head, the illusion that you're going to be writing from scratch. I'm going to do from scratch because it's better. No, it's not. It's actually not better. And you're not writing from scratch. Unless you're writing machine language, uh, you're not writing from scratch. When trying to decide whether or not you want to uh, rewrite from scratch or or patch up an old app, that's a hard thing. you got to really look at it, and it's a judgment call. I've done it twice, but I can remember off the top of my head in my career, where I looked at a code base. I said, you know what? For what they want to do, this code base is just not compatible. Sometimes the lack of compatibility because the technology is too old in the original code base, or because maybe there was like five, ten programmers on it over the years, and it's become just a mess. At some point, software has to be rewritten. iOS, they did it with not our they, they did it with macOS. macOS 10 was a total rewrite from scratch. They they basically scrapped the old code base and rebuilt macOS on top of free BSD, which is a flavor of Unix, and Windows as well. At one point, they had to uh, start from scratch with Windows and rebuild. I believe the current set of win current Windows is based on the e the NT version of Windows rather than the 95 branch, as far as I remember. So yes, at some point, you will have to do a rewrite. Very rare that you should. Most of the time, it's better just to patch uh, existing code, add to it, create a facade. It's coming off a facade design pattern. You can look that up and just build off of that or maybe support an existing uh, code base by creating a, a uh, supporting app that exposes functionality through a microservices uh, design pattern. That might be a better approach. That's what I did with Studio Web 3. The Studio Web 3 code base was active from 2010, 11 until about a year ago, eight months ago, less than a year ago. And after all those many years, I find, you know, we, we extended it through, you know, we, uh, the main code base was written uh, PHP Code Igniter, which at the time it was the predominant framework. And then as I got older and older and older and less and less capable, I then uh, created a, we then created a second app in PHP Laravel, which is a far more advanced framework. It's the 
best one probably out there today for PHP. And then it, we use that to create a series of microservices which the old app consumed to bypass some really uh, archaic aspects of the code base. So we were able to extend the life of the old Studio Web 3 app by a couple years, at least two, three, four years perhaps, because we did that, we're able to basically you know, retrofit, if you will. It's literally, literally bypasses. We did code, code, C-O-D-E, bypasses. Anyhow, but at one point I said, okay, that's it. Uh, I pulled the trigger and we re-architected from scratch with brand new frameworks and uh, much more optimized code because at this point in time, we knew the use case much better. When I first designed Studio Web, it was more or less just uh, something out of my mind, something that I came up with. And, uh, and as we got more and more involved with schools and we got feedback and more and more students on board, we really started to understand how the app needed to work. And as a result, when we designed the new Studio Web, the, new, the database structure was totally redesigned accordingly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so when you're looking at... Uh, to summarize, so when you're looking at whether or not you should rewrite an app from scratch, you have to con try, it's, it's a judgment call, but you have to consider whether or not, uh, which is, you know, where you need to go with the app. Um, if it's just a maintenance thing and there's no real major core functionality changes or there's no real core problems, then you might want to stick to the old code base and just patch it or bypass it. If, on the other hand, uh, you're finding that the old code base is hitting a roadblock, it's hitting a point where patches won't work, where it just, just, just it's not going to work. That was the case with Studio Web 4 to, uh, to accommodate what I needed to do. The old code base just couldn't be patched. We, we, were, we, had, we, were, we were at its limit. So, because when you start writing a new code base, you're going to have new bugs. There's no question you're going to have new bugs. You have to expect that. So even when, for example, Mac OS X, the first couple of years, there's a lot of problems, a lot of problems before they were, they were able to iron out the uh, new bugs. So that has to be considered. So yeah, if the old code base is just messy and you just need to keep it up to date, maybe add some minor supporting features, then I would probably just patch the old stuff because rewriting from scratch is it's gonna be a lot of work. On the other hand, if the old code base is at a situation where you're hitting the wall and you need to implement some a lot new features and or, or, or you have scaling issues that can't be solved with the old code base, then you have to bite the bullet and literally just biting the bullet because rewriting from scratch could be a lot of work. Then you can look at rewriting from scratch and then you start looking at the languages that are best suited for that job. Could be Python, but it may be something else as well. It, it might be something else as well, depending. That all said and done, all the major web stack languages all have their pros and cons these days. Depends what you want to do. Uh, Java is not something I would use for new and uh, new projects or startups, startups because of the licensing deal with Oracle has implemented and because it's a verbose language, it takes a long time to get something done. On the other hand, if you have a Java infrastructure and you just want to create a supporting application, then it makes sense to do it in Java. Uh, yada, 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 yada. So there you go. I hope that answers that question. At the end of the day, it's a judgment call, but I hope I gave you at least some guidelines in terms of how to think about it. This is what I have used in the past. It's worked for me. I I, I can remember two projects off the top, top of my head. You know, I've been doing this for 800,000 years. So I'm sure I've had to do this kind of stuff and I just don't remember off the top of my head. All right, that's it for today's uh, Q&A.